It's that time of year. Let's talk about new gear for 2023. What's going on, guys? It is 2023, and I'm excited about the new year and the new possibilities of getting out of the backcountry and getting some great miles in and trying out some new gear. And if you've watched this channel, you know I love gear. And if you enjoy the video today, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Now, the first piece of gear we're going to talk about this year that I'm going to be using in 2023 that I've maybe not used before is this jacket. This is the Nova Pro jacket from Outdoor Vitals. And the reason I love this jacket is it is a warm, warm jacket. It's not a three season jacket. This is not something you're going to wear in the summer months or the spring months and most of the fall. This is something you're going to wear when temperatures are going to be getting below freezing. This is a jacket that's going to keep you nice and warm. The jacket I'm currently wearing weighs in right around a pound. And like I said, this is not a summer spring jacket. This is a winter jacket. So it is going to weigh a little bit more, but it is still really lightweight when you consider the warmth of the jacket. It's got this really interesting baffle system. There are no sewed in spots within the baffles. It's actually, I guess you could say it's woven into the jacket. There are 10,000 fewer stitches on this jacket than what you're gonna have on your average puffy jacket, which means a few things, but the biggest one being fewer drafts. And so they have eliminated that issue by actually basically weaving these baffles into the jacket. They use an 800 plus fill power down LT insulation. Now this jacket in particular, like I said, weighs 16 ounces. This is a 3XL. The reason I'm wearing a 3XL is because the way it's made. Uh, Outdoor Vitals pretty much makes all of their clothing with an athletic cut, meaning you're gonna wanna size up. So if you're somebody who wears a 2X, you're gonna need a 3X. If you're somebody who wears a medium, you're probably gonna wanna look at a large. Another really cool feature, are pit zips. This thing actually has pit zips in it. I don't know another insulated jacket that actually has pit zips, but it is genius. One of the areas in your body where you sweat the most is in your armpits. And one of the biggest areas where heat can release from your body to keep your body from overheating is in your armpits. And so having the ability to vent those is incredible. Another great feature, thumb holes. I love thumb holes on jackets, especially as the weather gets colder. Uh, I want to have full use of my fingers, but I want the bigger part of my hands to still stay warm. And having the thumb holes on the jackets allows for that. The jacket also fits long in the back, which I've mentioned multiple times on this channel. I like things that fit long in the back. I'm a bigger guy, therefore my inner plumber likes to come out sometimes when I'm hiking and it gets chilly back there. So having a jacket that goes a little bit long so that when you sit down, the jacket doesn't lift up and your backside freezes is awesome. It's also nice when you're hiking up hills and the people behind you see a long jacket and not something else. Up next are the Lost Coast Fingerless Mitts from Outdoor Research. I love these gloves. I have a couple buddies in Jeremiah Stringer and Jason Waugh who swear by fingerless gloves. They love to have the use of their fingers, but to be able to keep their hands warm at the same time when they get to camp. One of the things I love about these is you actually have a flip top mitt to go with it. A few quick stats on these for the stat junkies that are out there. These are 85% rag wool and 15% nylon on the outside. There's a polyester Sherpa lining on the inside for moisture wicking and for warmth. The gloves themselves weigh like right around five ounces. Uh, again, we're talking winter gear. This is winter gear. You're not gonna wear this in the summertime or in the spring. So the weight of these, um, isn't as big of a deal, but for what they are and the warmth they produce, uh, the weight is really good. There's also a magnet built into the hand so that the glove simply does this. It closes right into place. Uh, they really do keep your hands warm and I have yet to see my hands sweat in them. So they're definitely worth checking out. Up next on this list is actually something that I'm wearing around my neck right now. And that is the Sunto MC2 compass. Now, if you've ever watched the backpacking podcast, you would notice that we've had Andrew Skirka on there a couple times now, and he's a big believer 
in the importance of learning how to use a compass and a map to navigate when you're in the back country. And for a couple of years, I've been wanting to do that. And this year for Christmas, my uh, father-in-law actually purchased this for me and I'm really excited to try it out this year. It weighs in at about 2.65 ounces and quite honestly, I have been in situations where if I'd been hiking alone, I would have had no electronics to help me get out of the woods. I've been through horrible storms, horrible weather, and not been able to access my phone because my phone was destroyed because of the weather. Having uh, some kind of, of compass to use with it's gonna be huge. So this year I'm excited to learn how to use a compass and potentially maybe even do some videos on it this year, we'll see. The next piece of gear on this list is actually what I'm wearing underneath this jacket, and that is my 8020T from Appalachian Gear Company. Now, if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you know that I'm a huge fan of alpaca gear. Alpaca is amazing for multiple reasons. It's sweat wicking, it's softer than merino wool, and it is antimicrobial, meaning it just doesn't stink. So I'm a huge fan of anything that comes out that's made with alpaca that can be used as a base layer. The reason AppGear calls this an 80-20 shirt is because it is 80% alpaca and 20% tensile. And we've already talked about alpaca, but tensile is actually a really interesting fabric in and of itself in that it's made from wood pulp. So this entire shirt is made completely of all natural fibers. And that's a big deal to AppGear. They wanna make sustainable, all natural fibers whenever they make their gear and that's what this is. Another really cool thing about this is something called a weft knit. And what that means is that if you poke a hole in this, which is probably gonna happen at some point, and when that happens, a lot of times with a knitted style shirt, the moment you poke that hole, there's a run that goes through the whole thing. And the weft knit that they use actually prevents that. You may poke the hole, the hole may eventually get a little bit bigger, but you're not gonna have that run that goes through the entire shirt. A large version of this shirt will weigh in at about eight ounces. The double X version that I'm wearing right now weighs in at 10 ounces. It's not a really heavy shirt, but it is very comfortable. And one of the things I like about App Gear's shirts and hoodies is that they aren't made with an athletic cut. They're actually made with a, a regular fit. Now I've noticed these shirts are nowhere near as, as loose as the hoodies but they still fit true to size. So if you wear a 2X, you can get a 2X in the shirt and be just fine. And what's great is they have a short sleeve version too. Uh, this just came out recently. This will be my base layer in the summer. Uh, it's a short sleeve version of this shirt. Of course, the weight will be a little bit less than the long sleeve, but you'll get all the same benefits from this shirt that you would this one. The next piece of gear on this list is of course a backpack. And this year, I will be trying out the Waymark through 40 liter backpack. I actually got this pack back in the summer. Uh, but as you know, if you watched my video from last week, a lot of my backpacking trips got hijacked. And because of that, I only used the Z Packs Arc Hall Ultra Pack the entire year. But I never got the chance to use this one, even though I had it in the arsenal. I never got a chance to use it. So starting in the spring of this year, I will be using this pack solely. Let me give you just a few uh, tech specs and some things about this pack so you know what you're working with when you get a pack like this. The Waymark through 40 liter weighs in right around 35 ounces as I have it with the extra large belt and the medium long torso. It's made with an EPX 200 fabric, which is uh, the same company that makes Ultra. And the fabric is fully uh, recycled material taken from bottles, I believe, like water bottles. So it's really extremely water resistant to the point of almost being completely waterproof. Obviously no fabric is completely waterproof, but this thing definitely pushes those limits. Uh, it is definitely gonna keep your gear dry uh, inside of the pack. Now for me, I'm into more of a minimal style pack, which is what this is. I don't want all the extra zippers and ties and clips. I don't want the extra pockets and things. I want one large area. I want a nice big front pocket and two side pockets to put water bottles in and tent stakes and those kinds of things. The, uh, the back pocket or the front pocket, depending on how you wanna call it, it's a thing, I guess, is made of ultra stretch fabric. The side pockets, 
are also made with EPX fabric. Uh, the only thing that I'm, I'm a little concerned about with these pockets is the fact that there's no drain hole in them. Um, living where I live, there's a lot of times where you'll be hiking in heavy, heavy rain. And if this pocket doesn't have a drain hole, that rain could fill up this pocket and make it really uncomfortable. So uh, that's maybe something that maybe my, maybe just my pack didn't have that on it, but I didn't see any drain holes in either pocket and that's a little bit of a concern for me. Uh, but I do love the fact that they're elastic, they're big. Uh, you'll easily fit two water bottles in here if you want to. The straps are really comfortable, nice and soft with a daisy chain system on them. The hip belt is also really wide and uh, a really nice, comfortable hip belt at that. It's also got the daisy chain system on it, which allows you to connect pockets if you want to use hip belt pockets or to connect a, uh, a fanny pack, which is what I typically use when I go backpacking. Now, I don't use an ice axe and I don't typically uh, put my trekking poles on my backpack, but they do have spots to put your trekking poles in an ice axe, which is really nice. It's a great option to have on here. Uh, there is some cord on the side, some compression cord, which allows you to compress the bag a little bit. Um, I would use this more probably just to hold in like tent poles or if you're carrying an ice axe or something you wanted to keep it in the side pockets, you could do that here as well. Typically, I use a 50 liter bag. This is a 40 liter bag. So this was gonna kind of test me a little bit this summer if I can pare down my gear a little bit so that it fits in a little bit smaller bag. So this is gonna be an interesting thing to try out this year for me, using something that's more of a 40 liter bag instead of a 50 liter. Now my next piece of gear is actually on the inside of this pack. And believe it or not, you may not believe me when I say this, but that piece of gear is actually a tent. And that is the Outdoor Vitals 40s two-person tent. Uh, the name 40 is kind of says it all. This thing is meant to be a fortress. In other words, it's meant to handle weather. Uh, Outdoor Vitals is in Utah and Utah gets some of the craziest weather. Whether you're in the desert with sandstorms and crazy wind, or you're in the northern part of the state in the Uinta Mountains and you're getting crazy snowstorms with blustering winds as well. Uh, this tent is made, made to handle all of it. The entire tent, fly and floor, is made with a 15D ripstop Silpoly nylon that is extremely durable and feels indestructible. When I set this tent up for the first time, I was shocked at just how substantial this thing felt. The interior is 48 inches by 88 inches with a 46 inch peak height in the middle. And what's great about that is uh, two people can sleep in this very easily. According to their website, even though the interior is 48 inches wide, they say that two 25 inch pads will fit. I'm assuming that just lowers the bathtub floor a little bit on it, but it says that two will fit. Like I said, there's a huge interior. It only takes six stakes to set this thing up, but you can add up to four more stakes to really get it uh, dialed in and, and ready in case of a storm. This thing is made to handle crazy winds and it's a trekking pole tent. It weighs in at two and a quarter pounds, which surprised me. When I got this thing and I felt the fabric and I set it up, it surprised me that this tent only weighed two and a quarter pounds. I would have thought this would have been a three pound tent but it's not. I think it's Voodoo Witchcraft at Outdoor Vitals, but who knows? Definitely excited to try this out this summer, get it up on some ridges in the Red River Gorge and see how it handles the wind. Also in this pack is the sleeping pad I'm gonna be using this summer, and that is the Rapide SL sleeping pad from Big Agnes. Uh, I've seen a lot of people talk about this pad online, and so it got me interested in checking it out. According to some of my friends, this is the most comfortable sleeping pad on the market right now. This particular version is the 25 inch by 72 inch, the wide regular version of the pad. It weighs in at 24 ounces, so only a pound and a half. It's got a 4.2 R value, meaning that this thing will keep you warm down to some pretty chilly temperatures. Now, if you look at the website, don't be fooled when it says it is a 4.2 inch thick sleeping pad. Technically, it's not. The uh, outer baffles are 4.25 inches while the inner baffles are about three and a half, three and a quarter inches uh, high, meaning that it's still a really thick pad, 
but it's made so that you don't roll off the sides. By raising those outer baffles a little bit higher, it keeps you centered in the pad throughout the night helping to make a more comfortable night's sleep. Also, something that's really great about this is it has the vertical quilted baffles, which for me are way more comfortable than the horizontal baffles that you see on a lot of your sleeping pads. Uh, it just seems to be, for me, way more comfortable and way more natural for my body when I'm laying on the pad. The pad does come with an inflation sack, a stuff sack, uh, some extra seals for the valve and some patches to patch up any holes that may happen while you're using the pad. In all, it comes in right around, I believe, 150 bucks. It's a great sleeping pad. I'm interested to see how it holds up throughout the year. Also new for this year is the Flextail Tiny Pump 2X. This just came out recently, weighing in at right around three and a half ounces. This is a really useful piece of gear for when you go out and you're trying to inflate your sleeping pad, because let's be honest, after hiking, you don't want to have to blow up a sleeping pad. A couple really cool features of this, obviously, you've got the... This thing is really loud. It does a great job of filling your pad up very quickly. They claim that you can fill up a sleeping pillow over 110 times, I believe, and you can run this awesome lantern for up to 10 hours. Uh, I love the lantern because it does come in different brightnesses. You can hang this from the top of your tent or from the ridge line of your hammock very easily to give you light at night if you need it. My favorite feature of this flex tail pump compared to the last tiny pump is the fact you don't have some weird valve coming out the sides of it. This is way easier to store away than the old one was because you don't have that weird valve coming out the side. You've got all kinds of different connectors that you can hook up to it to make sure it fits the pad that you're using. And quite honestly, uh, it may be the most underrated piece of gear that you may have in your entire kit. Also in my list for this year is my Ghost Pepper 50 degree top quilt from Loco Libre gear. Now I bought this last year to use all summer. This is a 900 fill sleeping bag that is stupid lightweight. I think this thing weighs 11 ounces. It's a 70 inch by 55 inch wide quilt. Uh, it's got a foot box that you can zip up if you need it. I realized after getting it, I should have gotten a 75 inch long uh, quilt just because the 70 inch, once you do the foot box, it's a little bit on the short side. It still works for me because I'm not tall by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a fantastic quilt. You can go in and actually customize everything. I did red with black stitching on the inside and black with red stitching on the outside. You can really go in and customize this thing out amazingly well. And it's really inexpensive as far as quilts go. I think this cost 225, 250 bucks for the quilt. And in the summer times in Kentucky, a 20 degree quilt that people like to use like three season does not work when it's 80 degrees when you go to bed at night. So having a quilt that's way uh, less heavy, something that is not nearly as warm is fantastic for summer backpacking. And I can't wait to finally get to use this thing this summer when I go out into the backcountry. So what new gear are you using in 2023? What kind of stuff are you going to start using for the first time this year? Leave those in the comments below. I'd love to hear some of the stuff you guys are using. I hope you have a great rest of your week. And as always, stay strong, hike long, and I will catch you on the next go round.